All right, how's it going guys? So here is going to be my review here for the Frame Arms Stylet Interceptor RE version. So this is the RE version. That means it just has the updated frame. That's all that, that means. And with this being a variation of the Stylet, this is pretty much going to count as a review just of the Stylet in general. But just keep in mind that what this box, what you get in this box is essentially just a, a packaging of the original Stylet plus the Extend Arms 04 option parts for that. And then you also have some of the leg parts from the Kanjar kit which is another version of the stylet. I didn't, I forgot about that when I did the unboxing, so I didn't mention that in the unboxing video. But so basically this kit just gives you the stylet with a bunch of different option parts for it, which is great, but you end up having a lot of leftover parts. So if you don't want to spend extra money for this particular version, say you just want the regular stylet, you don't necessarily want a whole bunch of option parts, then obviously you can save your money. Because this kit, of course, is going to be a little bit more expensive with a list price of 5,400 yen, around 50, 55 dollars for this. I'd say it's really not a bad price and considering all the different option parts that are nice, but if you don't particularly need a lot of them, then the standard stylets or perhaps the Kanjar kits could also work for you. So anyway, this was a really fun kit and I gotta say probably one of the most solid builds of the Frame Arms line that I've built so far. So we'll get into it and talk about all the different articulation and all the different option parts we have included with this. But first off, just as always, thanks to the USA Gundam Store for their support. If you guys want to check out the link down below, there's a whole bunch of frame arm stuff. Of course, Gunpla and everything else there on their site as well. We can save 10% off everything using the coupon code there, Zacharelius10. So check that out there down below. Alright, now let's get through, just let's just go through all the articulation here first on the kit. Alright, so whichever option parts you end up putting on the kit in the end, they're not going to affect the articulation in any way differently. So let's just go over that. That part of this first so the head will first go up to about there so if we move the backpack of the way then we can get the head up a little bit farther there like that so that much looking upwards and then down to there and then of course you can rotate that but it is going to be blocked a little bit by some of these parts there but you can see it does have a pretty cool interesting shape for the head eye detail is there but no stickers or clear parts or anything for that you'll just have to paint that in sort of like an eye visor there on the face but of course there's one thing you'll notice all throughout is just some nice color separation here with the white the dark gray the lighter gray and everything all looks really good so here in the middle section we will have a little bit of forward and back but in this case not really all that much forward actually it's just a little bit of backward movement so i guess if you would have wanted like a flying pose a little bit of backwards bend is always good for that so you can get a nice good flying pose with that with the head pointed up as well you're also not going to have any side to side but you will have some rotation here of course the shoulder joint will swing forward and back a little bit like that. You can also bring that up and down ever so slightly. The shoulder armor itself will move separately, but it doesn't really move a whole lot. The arm ultimately will only be able to come out to not really even 90 degrees, so upwards not all that much just because the shoulder armor is just kind of getting in the way of that. But then the arm is going to work pretty normally. We have rotation there at the top and then a double joint for the elbow, but once again it's kind of a little bit blocked by these parts in there, so you're going to get a little bit more than 90 degrees, but that's about it. The wrist is just connected in via a straight peg, so you can rotate that. These little front skirt winglet bits here like that, those can be rotated up and down like so to get out of the way of the legs. There's nothing here on the back skirt, but let's just take a look at the backpack itself. That can obviously move up and down like so. Got some nice detail up in and around that as well. As for the legs, they can come out all the way to the side to about there for the maximum spread. If we move that front skirt part up and out of the way, you can get the leg up to about 90 degrees there. This very large knee part is also kind of getting in the way, so we'll just go ahead and bend that. You can see that's about how far you can get the leg up. The double joint here in the knee will give you a pretty nice full bend there. You have this just kind of peg sticking out, which looks a bit odd with nothing attached onto it, but other versions will use that peg. These wing parts here on the side, you can rotate or just omit for plugging on some of the extend arms parts which we'll see here in a little bit this part here on the front of the ankle front of the shin that doesn't move or anything at all it's just fixed onto there in a fixed pose and the ankles will move side to side very nicely like that forward you can get the legs forward as much as you can before they're running into that front part back a little bit back to there this wheel can be rotated it's not really going to do a whole lot but you can rotate that up underneath the feet you can see you got a little bit of detail there it's not too bad just the front half of the foot basically the back half of the foot is just that wheel part but some nice detail with the piston and everything for that and then the, like on the back of the 
thighs, you got some frame showing on there. So overall the detail and articulation is all pretty good. And now let's take a look at all of the different optional parts that you have for that, because we've got a few. Just starting off with the head, we've got two different versions of the head. This would be the head that's used for the stylet and the kanjar. And this is the head that you get with the extend arm. So it has a little bit more bulbous there. Look at the front, the wing at the top is uh, significantly smaller, was just turned into basically a little antenna. And then he's got these big wings out the side there instead of these little mini ones like that. The face basically is about the same. It has little tubes and everything off to the side, but it's just kind of the general shape of the top of the head. Different parts are either shortened or extended for that. So it's an interesting look for the optional head. Then for the shoulders, we've got three options. Now these are the ones that are included with the extend arm set. Now these are just the standard stylet shoulders, which you do have these options as well. And of course you can mix and match these one or the other. One other note about the stylet shoulder armor here is that this wing blade here on the side can be rotated up and then you can pull that out and you can see you got a little handle here for that. So this becomes a little sword weapon that you can use in the hand as well. And then our third option is these much larger ones. And these have an interesting gimmick in that these kind of center parts can be moved separately up and down like that. And then the lower one also moves separately like that. So you can have this sort of more tilted up and out like that. But then also the front and back parts of these also swing out to open like that. So you can open that up or leave the front part closed, open out the back one, swing that towards the back and then have this shooting like out the back like that. So like thrusters, you'll see, I'll show that on the kit in a moment. But basically these giant shoulder thrusters can turn into like backwards facing thrusters so that it can like add to the sort of backpack thrust of that. Then we've got an optional chest part here. And this is the chest part that was included with the extend arm. So it's got a little bit more detail. It's got these little fin details at the top as well. Uh, the front like intake is a little bit different. The shape for that, the, vet, the vent in the front. So you can see it's generally the same shape and colors and everything, just a little bit different details for that. And we have a set of these optional parts for the leg armor as well. Now these are the leg armor parts for the conjure. This is part goes to the top of the thigh. This part goes on the middle of the shin section. And this is the knee guard part. So I'll switch out these parts on the legs to show you how these parts are going to look actually in use here in a moment as well. Once again, these are used in the conjure kit and are not included in the extend arms set. But um, honestly, I don't really particularly like the look of these legs. They're, these are like the minimum armor detail legs so like you'll have a bunch of frames showing as you'll see in a moment once those are actually uh, installed and then we've got an optional set of wings which are all just very slightly different basically they just have a little bit more a little bit different detail they're a little bit larger but the other special thing about these new wings is that the old one is just one solid piece with this it's actually two pieces so that the wing here can actually be rotated like that but actually what that also allows you to do is remove that and you've got a hard point you can actually take the your big weapon part here and connect this onto the backpack then like so. So that's it for the optional armor parts. Then of course we've got hand options as well. Aside from the closed fists I've got on there, you also have a set of open expressive hands and some weapon holding hands. You have a set of each of those for the left and the right. Then for weapons from the stylet, we have this arm mounted set of small little missiles here that will just plug onto the back of the arm and then that, those can just be fired off. You can remove that off of there and you can't really do anything else with it, but they can be removed off of this mounting set here easily. And then we've also got the Gatling gun from the stylet as well. Now what's different about this is now that we've got two of them. So you can dual wield those or probably what is more likely in my case, give one to this kit and give one to a different kit. Now they are mirrored for the left and the right side, so they're not exactly the same. So just keep that in mind that they are just slightly different. And then also from the extend arms, we have these weapons. Now we've got four of these and you've got some different options for them. So you've got these peg parts, so using them to just peg them onto different parts of the kit as they're meant to be plugged onto the side of the leg, or I mean, you can do whatever you want with them. You also have handle parts, so you can actually hold them in the hands as well if you wanted to mount these used in the hands. And you can see you have different slots where you might want to plug that handle into different places or the peg. And then what these do is uh, not a whole lot, but you have this blade that flips out of here. You just pull that, the blade will pop out and you just fold that forward so you've got this long blade weapon also acts as I guess sort of a shield and then you also have these two little I guess machine gun kind of turrets on there so it's a ranged weapon as well as a melee weapon as well as some uh, defense here as well so some pretty interesting weapons here then again these are included with the frame arms extend arms set for this and just for a size comparison so you guys can get an idea about how big this kit is you can see it's going to be a little bit smaller than your standard 1 100 scale kit and obviously bigger than most high grades so it's i would put it a, probably about the same size as like a master grade wing kit it's about the size of your kind of a little bit smaller master grades all right so then with that i'll basically just show you guys a few of the different options of how you can set it up using some of the different option sets 
again including the kanjar leg armor there which again i think is a little bit too minimalistic for me i it could look cool i think mounted on like an architect frame if you were going to do some sort of like custom kit bash and that is another great thing about this set while it does give you a lot of extra parts that you won't end up needing for this because you can only put so much on the kit you have a lot of leftover parts that then you can use for other different frame arms kit bashes and if you know anything about the frame arms line or a lot of kotobuki kits in general is that they're very customizable the frame arms line especially is meant to be very customizable with all the kits being based around mostly the same architect frame so with that being such a compatible frame that you can use for a lot of the different parts you can easily use similar leftover parts from this kit and leftover weapons or whatever on uh, some other different custom builds that you might end up wanting to do later on so like i said before the kit is pretty solid overall more solid feeling than some other framing arms kits that i've built but there are some flaws most notably in that it does have a handful of seam lines here and there with it being a frame arms kit that should be also pretty expected with any of these kits pretty much you're going to have some seam lines here and there that you're going to have to worry about but otherwise not really a whole lot to complain about with this kit another common complaint about the frame arms line in general is just the price and like i said with this kit being around 55 dollars for the list price for that that is a little bit high for a kit which is essentially kind of like a master grade not quite as complex in the number of parts but with the size and the sort of general amount of detail it's basically comparable to a master grade so 55 dollars is really not all that expensive for a, if we were a bandai master grade kit and then plus all of the weapons and accessories that you get included with here i gotta think is probably a really good deal for this kit if you were to buy this stuff separately like if you wanted to make some sort of mashup of using some of these different parts where you'd have to buy the stylet and the extend arm set for that i'm sure it would probably cost you more and then you also have some parts there the leg parts armor parts from the kanjar as well so really nice set of parts here with this but considering that i probably won't ever get and review the original stylet kit let me just say that the stylet in general i'm gonna say give it i'm gonna give it a big thumbs up and especially this particular version of the stylet the interceptor also a really big thumbs up now the color scheme some might find a little bit boring uh, just with that light gray kind of light bluish color for that uh, it doesn't really have a whole lot of bright colors going on there some people might prefer the bright blue of the original stylet but of course you could remedy that with some painting but even if you don't want to paint i like the look of these colors but i can understand why some people might find them a little bit boring if you're not going to be planning on painting it though on the kit overall the color separation is pretty good those extend arms uh, weapons parts there the extra shields kind of blade weapons parts those are a little bit boring looking just being that they're all one color definitely doing a little bit of painting on those i think would help bring out some of the detail on them but other than that guys i think that's just about going to cover the stylet interceptor really cool kits I think we're off to a very good start here with Frame Arms Month. Now I've got an option set that we're going to be doing a review on here in the near future that I want to try out specifically on this kit. So we'll be seeing this kit again here pretty soon when we take a look at that. But for now guys, of course, if you have any other questions or comments, do feel free to leave those down below. Again, thanks to USA Gundam Store for their support. And thank you guys all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.